Would you like to know how to increase your earnings as a cloud architect, solutions architect, or enterprise architect? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to discuss the difference between the lowest paid architects and the highest paid architects. And we're gonna talk about what you need to do to advance in your architecture career and move into a more prestigious role like a principal architect or an enterprise architect or a chief technology officer, chief architect, or even a chief information officer. And as architects, realistically, there's two sets of skills we possess, our technical skills and our business skills, and both are critical. But it's the balance of skills that we actually have that determines our impact and determines our salary. And uh, that is gonna be where we wanna influence as we wanna increase your cloud architect salary or enterprise architect salary or even AWS solutions architect salary. So how do you earn more? Well, you earn more by the impact you actually create to your clients. So let's talk about impact. The impact of an architect is the difference we can make in our client's business. So I'm gonna tell you a story of two architects and we'll examine the impact. Now, of these two architects, they're gonna both work on the same architecture. In this case, we have a business that is a global retailer that's willing to spend about a billion dollars into enhancing their e-commerce platforms with the goal of increasing revenue, otherwise known as sales. Now we have two architects and they create very different designs. And I'm gonna tell you right now, both architects design the technology solutions correctly and both are going to work. But architect one, who's earning about a half a million dollars a year as a chief architect, created a strategy. And that strategy, that architecture, that blueprint, increased sales by about two and a half billion dollars to the retailer. Now, Architect 2 has 13 AWS certifications, is earning about $150,000 a year, created the most beautiful technology design I've ever seen. They used the best, the coolest, and the most innovative technology. And while the tech works, there was absolutely no increase in sales. And guess what? What Architect 2 delivered is what happens 70% of the time where the technology works, but there's no Mar, mar, there's no measurable business art, uh, element. So let's evaluate the impact. Architect one, who was earning about a half a million dollars a year, increased sales by two and a half million. The company spent a million dollars on it. So uh, after covering the cost, the company's one and a half million dollars of revenue ahead. We don't know what their margins are to determine the exact impact on net income yet. So that architect, architect one, the highly paid architect, did something great for their client. They enhanced their business. Architect two, the one that was 13X AWS certified and has 10 additional certifications, this business got no increase in sales, but they still spent a billion dollars for the coolest technology in the world. Guess what? Architect two hurt the client. Why? They wasted a billion dollars and got nothing for it. What if they spent that billion dollars on research and development or employee raises or advertising or something that could help that business? So what's the difference between architect one, the business executive and architect two, the techie with 20 some third certifications, the focus and the mix of their skills. So architect one, has the business knowledge and the consulting skills that are necessary for that person to understand the business and align that organization's people, processes, and technology or the forces of business and makes that business perform better. Architect two is full of tech certifications and know the best tech, but they don't know how to optimize the business, which means pretty much every architecture they're gonna do is not gonna provide any business value, in which case 70% will fail, which is what we see with regards to architecture failure according to McKinsey's data. So what's the difference in the way architect one and architect two does their job? I can tell you right now, architect two came in, the uh, highly technical architect spoke to the tech teams, delivered a beautiful proof of concept that he actually coded himself. And then he got uh, the technical requirements and he did it all himself. And because probably the best tech skills that we're dealing with of these two architects. 
By comparison, Architect One, the highly paid architect that's earning about a half a million dollars a year, she started with the company's executives and she found the vision for the business. Then she mapped out the business architecture, worked with key stakeholders to understand their, their needs and goals and tuned uh, business processes with them to be the most optimal. Uh, the highly paid architect created a team of engineers to evaluate the client's technology systems and see its capabilities, weaknesses, and bottlenecks. The higher paid architect evaluated what changes in technology platforms will need to occur to meet the new business goals and meet the, on the business vision. The higher paid architect created an architecture team to evaluate all possible technology solutions that that organization could use to create the ultimate architecture. And the tech that was chosen in this architecture is the one that best meets the organization's needs after evaluating all trade-offs. Not what's coolest, but the one that's gonna help the organization best. Now this architect, the high paid architect, she presented the architecture to key stakeholders, got their input and tuned the architecture based upon the key stakeholders input. Uh, the high paid architect created a governance structure for the implementation and uh, future changes of the architecture. So what did each architect focus on? two very different things and they could be in the same role we've got one architect that's earning about a half a million dollars a year and they're focused on people processes and technology and the lower paid architect with the 23 certifications is focused on the tech itself so you want to earn more do you want to become a better one focus on the business outcomes now how do you focus on the business outcomes how do you drive transformation and results for your client well there's a few things you need to know you have to develop your business skills, your business knowledge, or your business acumen, because how do you tune a business without it? So go develop your business acumen skills. It'll pay dividends in your careers. Now, the architects that earn more aren't trying to do it themselves. They're leading a team. A team of 50 is much greater than a team of one. So go develop your leadership skills so you can bring a team of 50 with you. The higher paid architect was able to exercise influence and ethically glide slash persuade the client into making the right decisions. The executive architect that's earning a half a million dollars a year has executive skills because they'll be spending time with the C-suite, key stakeholders, which means lots of executive presence and CXO relevancy meetings. So get these skills. These are the skills that in can increase your salary by 100, 200, or 300 thousand dollars or more. Now, if you train with Go Cloud Careers in every program, we teach business skills, leadership skills, and executive skills because you're not going to be an effective architect without it. And if you're training with Go Cloud Careers, you're going to get these skills and they'll pay dividends. But if you're not, either join us at Go Cloud Careers or get a master's in business administration to help you in your architecture career and develop these business skills. If you want to learn how to be an architect or increase your architect salary, join us for one of our free architecture webinars. We run at least one per week. The link is in the description of this video. We also have many other free things in this video to help you in your architecture career, career guides, interview guides. So please check them out, they're free. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, or any other architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now and I look forward to seeing you soon on a video or a webinar.